And my brother was the t traditional older brother. He would beat the living daylights out of me. When he was 12 or 13 or so, my parents would occasionally leave him in charge. When he was in charge, he would charge me for watching television. I had to pay a nickel for watching television. If I wanted a sandwich, he would charge me a dime. He, he was brutal. We've gotten to be much closer friends now. We would play this game where John Zucker and my brother would get on the bed on their knees, and they were the U.S. Marines. And I would be on that floor, and I was the Korean Army, and I the North Korean Army, and I had to storm the bed. Well, it was one nine-year-old trying to storm the bed against two 12-year-olds, so I got the crap beat out of me all the time. I was elected vice president of the student government as a junior. I ran for president of the student body, and I lost. And in fact, the newspaper was against me, and they, the school newspaper, the Daily Pennsylvania, they wrote an editorial saying, better dead than red. The, the slogan at that time, the anti-communist slogan was better dead than red. So their editorial was better dead than Ed. But when I was trying to raise money for DA, I was running against the incumbent DA who was supported by Mayor Rizzo. And a lot of people in town were afraid to give money to anybody who wasn't supported by Mayor Rizzo. So I called someone up and the secretary would answer the phone. I'd say, is Mr. Jones there? And she'd say, who's calling? I'd say, Ed Rendell, I'm running for district attorney. She said, hold on. And then 30 seconds later, Mr. Jones is in Puerto Rico on vacation. Mr. Smith is in Hawaii. Mr. Parker is in the Virgin Islands. I would come home at the end of the day having raised almost no money and I would tell Midge, I'd say, I, I, I'm not raising a lot of money, but I'm sure helping the tourism business in Philadelphia. After about two or three years, I remember running into a couple of friends from law school and they asked me what I was doing, I told them, and they said, how can you do that? How can you spend all your time and energy and talent putting poor people in jail? I said, you guys don't get it. I said, 98% of our victims are poor people. They're from the same demographic as the defendants are. And these are poor people who've never had anybody speak for them in their life. The reason I was so careful to come to every community group, block parties I would come to, because my presence, not that I was Ed Rendell, but the fact that the mayor of the city cared enough to come to their block party on a hot August Saturday instead of being down at the shore, that meant something to people. You know, and I would try to work the press, just like coaches try to work the referees in a basketball game. You know you're not going to get a retraction from that story, but maybe you'll get a good story the next time. Uh, but I think I always believed in being accessible, and I think by and large I always have, uh, no question. Was there a, a columnist or a reporter for either of the papers who, who was kind of the bane of your existence, who you would always... John Bear. You know, they all saying if murder were legal. If murder were legal, I probably... I don't think I would have shot John, or I don't think I would have knifed him. I think I would have liked to boil him in a pot to see him suffer, you know? Uh, John would drive me crazy because John didn't believe that anybody in politics, that as soon as you ran for office, you were evil. My penchant for telling the truth and answering the question is one of the things that I think has made me popular as a politician and has given me a remarkable shelf life. I mean, I've been around, Midge often says, in a town that eventually turns on everybody, you've been around as a public official for 34 years and you're still enormously well liked. I think that's because people know I say what I believe, for better or worse. But I love being mayor. Mayor was more fun than governor, um, but th it, that was counterbalanced by, as governor, You've got the resources, the revenue, to do something really long-term and significant about problems like education. I will never forget an incident that happened when I was campaigning. I was campaigning at a roadhouse in Washington County. The operator, a wonderful man by the name of Ray Bologna, who's also in coal and in a lot of different businesses, he said, come to my roadhouse to campaign on Sundays. On Sundays, we have the largest bingo game in the state. So I came to the roadhouse on Sunday. There were almost a thousand people there, all senior citizens, all with their bingo cards. And he said, just go around and introduce yourself. So I ran around to the first five or six tables and I said, hi, I'm Ed Rendell, I'm the mayor of Philadelphia and I'm running for governor. 
No one looked up. They just concentrated on their bingo cards. So I regrouped, I stepped back, I stopped campaigning, I thought about it for a little while. And then I went to the seventh table and I said, hi, I'm Ed Rendell, I'm the mayor of Philadelphia, I'm running for governor and I want to legalize slot machines. Everyone's face, neck jerked to attention and, and they would say, what's that name, Sonny? And they would take out their pencil and write down my name. You can't please all the people on every issue and you'll go crazy trying to do it. So you've got to do what you feel is best. I mean, I was very fortunate. My dad, who died when I was 14, people say, what a tragedy, and it was. But I was fortunate. He lived long enough to give me great advice in virtually everything. And he told me about politics, and he never was in politics. He told me, son, he said, FDR was the most popular politician in my lifetime, and a third of the people hated his guts. I mean, I wouldn't trade my life experience for anything to be a movie star, to be a billionaire, nothing. Because I've spent most of my adult life using my energy and whatever talent I've got, making people's lives better. And it's a wonderful way to live. The great thing about the three offices that I've held, and even my year as party chairman, is I enjoyed every moment. I mean, as I said in the book, there's a lot of downsides to being in public office. I was out of law school for 43 years. By the time I finished my term as governor, I never made anything that our society would call real money. Never missed it for a day. Because in the end, there was nothing we really wanted to buy that we couldn't buy. Nothing that we really wanted to do that we couldn't do. And yet, every day I got up, I got paid for trying to make people's lives better. And that's a feeling that makes up for an awful lot. And uh, I said, I closed the book by saying, would I do it again? You bet.